archery, an ancient sport that almost faded into oblivion, is back in the limelight again. Let's watch Lee Wolf, internationally famous sportsman and author, as he tests a new modern bow. This bow, 65-pound pull, sends arrow after arrow into the very heart of the target. It takes lots of practice to prepare for the ultimate adventure in modern archery, the hunt for big game. A small blunt head is used on the practice arrow, but the hunting arrow is tipped with blades of razor-sharp steel. In the hands of an expert, it is a weapon of deep penetration and great killing power. September is the target month for Newfoundland's big game season. Now the time for practice is over. It is time to travel to the hunting ground. Lee Wolf loads his duffel and his bow into his small seaplane. He climbs into the late summer sky and heads northeast. Destination, Newfoundland. A day and a half later, less than a thousand miles from his home in Upper New York State, he crosses the narrow stretch of water separating Newfoundland Labrador from the island of Newfoundland. He continues over rugged mountains to one of the many good hunting areas where there is a mixture of open fields and evergreen forests. The plane trip ends and the camp has been set up deep in the hunting country by Jack McNeil, an old-time guide who is ready and waiting. McNeil is thoroughly familiar with the habits of both the caribou, which are native to the province, and the moose, which were introduced just over half a century ago. Jack and Lee scout the surrounding territory by air, and they find a cow moose feeding in a sheltered cove and a cow and calf grazing out on a grassy field. They pass over a young stag caribou, then over an older, lighter colored stag with a big set of antlers. Deep in the evergreens, they spot a bull moose feeding. The plane's shadow passes over two dull caribou, and they turn completely unafraid to watch the shadow move away, ignoring the aeroplane above them. Further along, another bull moose is spotted. Next, a big stag caribou crosses a stream beneath the plane. Then they find two big bulls together, one with its antlers still in velvet. Back on the ground again, the archer and his guide begin their hunt. They cross the well-worn trails where caribou have traveled back and forth for generations, and where new hoof prints have been made recently in the soft, dark earth. They cross the open country miles away from the nearest road or habitation. They sight a stay, but it's out in the open and there is no cover for a close approach. Quietly, the archer moves over the mossy ground to the edge of the timber. There he draws back his bow for a long shot, over 80 yards. The arrow flies and misses, passing just over the caribou shoulders. A breath of wind, any misjudgment of the distance can spoil the shot. With a rifle, it would have been a very easy kill. Caribou meat is tender, has excellent texture and a special fine flavor. But this time, when Jack and Lee sit down to eat, 
It's Take Beans and Like Them. Jack McNeil may not look excited, but he is. The reason in this case was a young stag caribou he'd spotted on the far side of a grassy meadow. Again, Lee stalks carefully, staying downwind, keeping out of sight, avoiding dry and broken branches, waiting, trying to line up his shot. But the stag is suspicious, and as the bow is drawn, he starts to run. The arrow flies, but misses the animal's neck by the barest margin. A running shot is never easy. Success requires stalking skill and a short shot at a motionless target. Still without fresh meat in camp, but as a change from beans, our hunters mix up some pancake batter. They fry it, Newfoundland style, in thick, hearty cake. A flip of the pan turns one over when the time is right. And they may be slightly burned, but they sure taste good to a hungry hunter, especially when topped off with plenty of butter and jam. Their drink is tea, the strong, dark brew most northern woodsmen prefer. As they sit in their wilderness camp, they look up and are surprised to find a cow moose has won to sight. A sudden gust of wind carries the man smell to her. Then she takes off on a run, but soon pauses again as if she knew she had nothing to fear. During early September, the fishing season in Newfoundland is still on for some species and there are always trout in the hunting areas. Light spinning tackle is easy to carry and it's simple to use. And when a concentration of brook trout is located, a strike becomes inevitable and a pan-sized fish is soon brought to shore. Almost every cast brings in a fish. These square-tailed trout are real fighters and mighty fine eating. How many trout can a hungry hunter eat? Well, maybe these beauties will make a satisfying meal for two men. They couldn't be fresher, and only one dish could be more welcome. Fresh caribou. The first sunlight was just spreading over the countryside on the fourth day of the hunt when a caribou stag was sighted. And once again the slow work of stalking begins as Lee, moving carefully, works closer to the animal. He watches from behind a bit of cover. The stag is alert and uneasy. Half an hour passes and the quarry relaxes and starts feeding again. Here a man with a primitive weapon goes forth to kill a great animal. It is not a contest between two equally matched adversaries. It is the difficult game of taking an alert wild animal completely off guard and making a quick and certain kill. The caribou, now fully at ease, lies down to rest while the hunter approaches with soundless steps against the wind. The arrow flies straight to its mark, penetrating the lung cavity and bringing a swift and certain death. This is the hunting harvest of Newfoundland's surplus big game animals. Thousands are killed annually by rifles, but very, very few by the much more difficult method of bow hunting. In the preceding scenes, the hunter and his trophy are both shown in the same scene at the actual time of the kill, thus providing mute testimony to the authenticity of these scenes and those to follow. The horns of this particular stag are still in velvet, the soft, furry covering which is usually shed in late August. Lee brings out the head and rests it on one of the seaplane's floats while they get the rest of the meat. It's too good to let any be wasted. 
soon Jack McNeil has tears in his eyes as he peels the onions to garnish the liver and steaks of the caribou. Feasting fit for a king or a successful bow hunter. Having killed his caribou on the fourth day of the hunt, Lee now decides to try for a moose. The hunting arrow is a deadly weapon, but a moose is a tremendous animal. Tough-skinned, heavy-boned, big-antlered, and always dangerous. As the days go by, he spends long hours watching the likely country and traveling the ridges. This is primeval hunting, where neither bow hunter nor rifleman need look like Santa Claus, but may dress to suit the color and the mood of the forest around him. On his tenth and final day, fortune smiles on our hunting archer as he spots a magnificent bull carrying massive antlers, a thousand pounds of proud wild strength. Again the stalk begins, the slightest trace of man sent on the wind, the smallest movement while the animal looks his way will ruin the hunter's chance completely. In time, this great animal too lies down to rest. His broad antlers show well above the scrub spruce where he lies. This is the opportunity that may never come again. Lee Wolf now begins the hazardous approach, silent as an Indian. Each movement, each step takes him closer to those spear-sharp antlers and towards a more certain kill. He sets the arrow to the string and draws the bow. Then drives the arrow deep into the great bull's chest, piercing the heart. Suddenly it's over. The long hunt, the patient stalks, the heart-catching thrills. First a fine caribou stag, and now a magnificent bull moose. Both kills completely recorded by the camera. Hunting so good, it's like a dream come true. The rest is anticlimax finding the trophy bull only a short distance away, approaching cautiously to make certain he is dead and no longer dangerous, and then placing the 64-inch bow and one of the 30-inch arrows upon the horns to show better the size of these excellent antlers. It's the perfect ending to a bow hunt that turned out to be an archery doubleheader in the province of Newfoundland, where sport is at its finest.